This is K9WLW. I'm doing a, another video today particular to setting up a DR memory for your hotspot. In this particular video, I'm going to focus on a little bit of controversy that I've heard uh, over the airwaves about how you can set it up for an open spot. It could be for an open spot one, an open spot two, or an open spot three. Again, this is pertaining D star only and particularly uh, on ICOM radios. And I'm going to use the ID51 as an example. Um, in an earlier video, I show how to set up a DR memory in general for hotspots. And the detailed step-by-step -step instructions that I gave, I recommend that you use the DV repeater method of storing the RPT1 and RPT2 information with your call sign for your hotspot and also where you have to assign a module. Well, the open spot doesn't necessarily require that you utilize the RPT1 and RPT2 information. It will work if you set up the RPT1 and RPT2 information correctly and it'll work beautifully. And in fact, for many, many, many months, I've been using my OpenSpot 2 programmed in that fashion. To kind of give you an idea what I'm talking about, uh, if you go into the DV memories, uh, you have your repeater list. And I stored all my hotspots down in group 30. I like to kind of keep them away from all the other uh, repeaters that are already stored in the radio, just so it's easier for me to find them. That's just a personal preference, but again, uh, however you want to store them or where you want to store them is entirely up to you. Now in here, I have two hotspots. I have an open spot two, and I have a hotspot known as the commander spot. Uh, which is a Pi Star based hotspot. Now, focusing on the open spot, you'll notice uh, the commander I have is K9WLWB. I have the open spot as K9WLWD. Now, I did that and I put a D as the RPT1 so that there wasn't a duplicate call sign error. So you can add additional hotspots. So you have to use a different module for each hotspot, otherwise it won't let you store the memory. Uh, that being said, I'm going to go into the open spot and show you how it was programmed. Okay, I guess I can't do it while I'm tuned to the open spot, so bear with me. This is one of the quirks of the radio. You actually have to leave that memory before you can look Whiskey, at it. India, nine, Mike, Romeo, Charlie. So I just switched to another DR memory. Okay, DV memory, repeater list. I'll scroll down to the bottom. Hot spots, open spot. Okay, now it'll let me in. You cannot look at it or, or any of your configurations, I guess, when you actually have it dialed up. So, okay, I stored it as a DV repeater. I named it. I didn't use a sub name. I put in the G RPT1 call sign, which was K9WLWD, and then it automatically loaded the gateway call sign, K9WLWG, which automatically loads in the RPT2 field. I put it in the group 30 hotspots. I put the use from to yes. I put in the frequency. I put in the duplex plus with a zero offset, which is important. And I explain that in, in my other videos, or one of my other videos when you where I explain how to set up a DR memory for hotspot. I put in my exact location. So I put in my latitude as it appears in the radio here at home. I put in the longitude. 
I put in the UTC offset to minus 5 because I'm in Eastern Time, and I just go by Standard Time, uh, which is, I know, time in the winter months. But I figured Standard is Standard, so I just left it at minus 500. Okay, and then I add right at it, if that's a word, and then that's how it was stored. Okay, well, I'm going to show you with the open spot 2, open spot 3, and even the original open spot, you have a shortcut way, which is going to be a little bit easier for storing your open spot. Um, now, I know I've done some videos on the RPT1 and the RPT2, a little bit of explanation about them, the difference between DV simplex and DV repeater or DR mode, which is the repeater mode. Um, you'll see here with my open spot, I have the UR call right now is at CQ, CQ, CQ. The R1 and the R2 have the call sign with the D module and the G module for getting out over the internet gateway. And this works for Pi Star hotspots and many uh, other type of hotspots, but the open spot doesn't really require any information in these two fields. You can use the information like I did earlier in my demonstration, but you don't have to do that. That being said, there is an alternate way and a quicker way to, uh, to store a DR memory for your open spot where you don't have to deal with these two settings here. So it's a few steps shorter and it works just as well. Now again, this applies to open spot. It does not apply to Pi Star hotspots. Pi Star hotspots absolutely require you to have the R1 and R2 information with your call sign, the module you've assigned it, and the G gateway in the R RPT2 or R2 field. Okay, so this is just for open spots. It's just a unique thing on how open spot works. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to now demonstrate how to set up the DR memory for the open spot with no RPT1 or RPT2 information. So it's actually pretty quick. And the way you can do that with the open spot, again, please don't do this with a Pi Star, it won't work. Um, you go to the menu, you go to DV memory, you go to repeater list. You go to the section where you want to store that hotspot memory, and I'm going to put it in my favorite number 30 down here at the bottom. You go into that, go to the bottom or wherever you want to store it. Uh, this will store it, I think, at the top. This will store it at the bottom, since I've already got two. So then once you find your location where you want to add it, this will add it to the bottom. You hit the quick speech button with a quick tap and you have the option to add. So you highlight the add, hit the uh, enter key. Now, it defaults to DV repeater, which is generally how you normally add uh, hotspots, particularly Pi Star hotspots, because the DV repeater mode requires the RPT1 or R1, as they call it in the menu, and the RPT2 information. That we that I just discussed. Well, with open spot, there's a little shortcut you can use. Instead of going to DV repeater, you can choose DV simplex. So I'm going to select that and I'm going to enter. Now it's DV simplex. Okay. All it's going to require me is to to fill in is a name, an optional subname. The group I've already selected, I'm going to change that to yes, I'm going to put in a frequency. I'm not going to put in the position because that's not necessary, but that's optional. I'll put in the UTC offset and boom, there's your end. So you notice it's several steps quicker than the DV repeater or DV, uh, DV repeater. So I'm going to name it and to make this video a little quicker, I'm going to just name it OS2. This will work on an open spot one or an open spot three, by the way. It's not just an open spot two thing. It's their platform. It doesn't require open spots platform that doesn't require DV repeater. 
So I'm going to just name this OS. Okay, rocker to the right. And dial back the other way for numbers. OS2. So I'm going to name it OS2. Hit enter once. Hit enter twice. And there it is in the name. Subname is normally where you hold the state or province of where the repeater is located. Remember, this is how we also enter in repeaters. I'm not going to put that in because it's not needed. It's in group 30, so that's already set. The use from, it defaults to no, just change it to yes. Hit the enter key, and now it's yes. You now dial the simplex frequency that you have programmed your hotspot for. In my case, it started at 400. Rocker to the right. 446. Uh, let's see, 446. In my case, it's 18750. 446.18750 is my hotspot frequency. Okay, I'm not going to enter in the position now because that's optional. I'll do the offset of minus 5, so I just spin counterclockwise to go negative till I get to minus 5 hours, like so. And all you have left to do is add right. And then it asks you, are you sure you want to add right? You hit yes, you hit enter, and bingo, there it is. Now, I'm going to show you the difference between that Back out of the menu. Then you go to the main DR screen where you have the from and the to. Rocker up to control the to, rocker down to control the from. Well, this is the original open spot setup where I use the RPT1 and RPT2, and you'll notice it has the R1 and R2 information. Again, that's the standard DV repeater method of storing something in the DR memory bank. Well now, if I go to the from field, go to repeater list, go to number 30, switch to my new memory, which I did with DV simplex, hit enter. If I hold the CS button, that's that magic button where you can see your RPT1 and RPT2 information, as well as your UR call and your my call. Notice how they're all dashes, it's all blank. Didn't have to do that. Well, clearly it'll work. It won't show your call sign over here, but that's fine. That's okay. It will work on the open spot platform. Let's see. Let me do a reflector info test. Repeater information, I should say, which is the I and the two command. Let's see. This is a good test to make sure it's working. Open spot connected to RPF. Zero, three, eight, delta. Okay, so it confirmed that I'm connected to REF038 Delta, and you can also see it scroll across the bottom of the screen. All right, well, let's do a test to see, will it connect to reflectors? Will it connect to repeaters through the gateway with this setup? Okay, so I'm going to go to, and this is another video, the magic of the your call sign, where I've stored specific commands to go to various X reflectors and repeaters and whatnot. So this is the Ohio XRF 038 Alpha. I load it right there with the link command, Kerchunk. Okay, let me try another Kerchunk. Open spot connected to XRF038 Alpha. Okay, so there you go. It connected to XRF038 Alpha, and you can see the confirmed connection scroll across the bottom of the screen. Okay, let's try a gateway repeater connection. Let's see what I have stored in here. I have the um, Jackson, Tennessee. Uh, C module, 
which is NT4MC space Charlie Link, which you see here at the bottom. So let's see if that works. So I load its link command in the to field. Kerchunk. Open spot connected to NT4MC Charlie. Okay. So I spin the knob until I get back to number, see the counter? I have 15 year call sign commands. I go to number one, and that's the use reflector that I stored over there, which I only have to spin the knob to get to. So now I'm ready to QSO on that repeater. So you can clearly see that you don't need to have the R1 or RPT1 and the R2 or RPT2 information stored in your DR memory for open spot. I believe this same technique that I just showed you will also work with the older school DVAPs. My understanding is, is the DVAPs don't have an RPT1 or RPT2 setting, so this method would work in programming a DR memory channel for that type of device. And there may be some others out there, I'm just not aware of all of them. But that is a shortcut method of actually programming a DR memory in the DV simplex method for the open spot. And it still gives you the access to all of the commands, uh, linking to reflectors, unlinking, and so on and so forth. And also the full access to your, your call sign for those special link commands that I also describe in another video. Anyway, um, one word of caution, I have yet to discover, <coughs> excuse me, uh, a trick or methodology for skipping the R1 and R2 information with the Kenwood D74. I've attempted to do the same there, and it has a glitch where it doesn't allow me to access the hotspot. But with ICOM radios, this is just fine. It's quicker and it's easier, and it will do the job. Uh, on any of the open spot uh, one, open spot twos, or open spot threes. So that's just a shortcut that might make it a little bit easier to still get full, full blown D star access with your open spot type uh, hotspot. Anyway, if you have any questions or any comments, please leave them below or send me an email to cq2meters at yahoo.com. 73s, this is K9WLW.